I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors we're going to be installing a Skyjacker lift kit on our 68 Jeep. Hey, welcome to Motors. Today we're going to be working on Blue Dog, our old 68 Jeep CJ5, and we're going to be removing the old worn out 2-inch suspension kit and replacing it with a new 2-inch suspension kit from Skyjacker, which includes new springs, shocks, a new pitman arm, and a steering stabilizer, as well as all the necessary hardware to do the job. Now you're probably wondering why we're going to be replacing our old 2-inch kit with a brand new one. And that's because in a future episode of Motors, we're going to be doing a spring over axle conversion, which will give us another 4.5 inches or so of height, and that's going to give us the room we need for our larger wheel and tire combination. But for right now, let's get this thing jacked up and get these tires off. We've got our Jeep supported by jack stands right underneath our frame, but we needed some additional height. So if you're in the same situation, grab a large block of wood or do what we did. We're using our 12,000 pound capacity ramps to give us that extra height. Either way, you need a safe and stable surface. Now the order in which we're gonna remove these old components, we're gonna remove the shocks first, then the U-bolts, and then our springs. But before you begin, you need to put a jack underneath your axle. That's gonna release some of that tension on our springs and prevent the axle from moving around. Now the tools you're gonna to need, all available from the Sears Blue Tool crew for an installation such as this, include ratchets with various extensions and sockets, both deep and standard, some pliers, diagonal cutters, a breaker bar, a torque wrench, a flat blade screwdriver, various wrenches, some white lithium grease, and for that pitman arm, you're gonna need a pickle fork as well as a three inch gear puller. You may also need some anti-seize for those new bolts if you have an old vehicle like the one we're working on. You're gonna need some mallets, some rags, some safety glasses, gloves, an electric impact, or you may also need some air tools. Now we'll be right back after this break with more motors. Hi, I'm Nate with Sears Tools. Let me tell you about the Blue Tool Crew. We know tools. With over 400 national brands and over 30,000 products, we can help you find the tools you need. Shop with us at your local store, online at sears.com tools, or with the latest Sears Tools catalog. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. And if you have any questions, give us a call at 877-4-BLUE-CREW. We're going to use our half inch Craftsman ratchet to remove our bottom nut on our shock and then a 3 8 ratchet for the top. Now here's the reason why we got to get rid of our old gas shocks because when you compress them, they don't rebound at all. They just stay down, unlike our brand new Skyjacker shocks, which take quite a bit more pressure to compress. And as you can see, they rebound just fine. those U-bolts out of the way, it's time to get our springs off next. Using some lithium-based grease, lightly coat the outside of the bushing and then insert it into the spring. Then do the same thing for the metal insert. the bushings installed in the new leaf springs, we can go ahead and install them. Now you may notice we didn't show you removing the bolts off the old springs. That's because we ended up having to cut them off. They just got seized in there over time. So we got smart on our new bolts. We put some anti-seize around the non-threaded part of the bolts. There we go. Now repeat the same process up here on the front, but you don't want to tighten that bolt down until you set it down onto the ground. 
After bolting in your new springs, you can install the new U-bolts provided by Skyjacker and the stock U-bolt pad. But before you get to that, you have to line this pin that's on the spring into the hole that's on this perch. Now, in the same way that you uninstalled it, this bolt here faces forward and out. Now, one of the other things that we had to do in order for these to fit is we had to drill out the holes just a little bit. Now, we're going to go ahead and finger tighten these nuts down the bottom. But before you tighten it all the way down, you want to make sure that these are straight up vertical, just like that. And then tighten down these nuts down to 80 foot-pounds of torque. We're going to go ahead and use our Craftsman ratchet and a three-quarter inch socket. Now, if you get tired of wrenching like I do from time to time, and you've got some air tools like we do, thanks to the Sears Blue Tool crew, you can take care of the job in a lot less time with one of these, the Thunder Gun from Ingersoll Rand. You can get one of these guys from the Blue Tool crew as well. <laughs> I don't want to tighten all the way because you still need to torque it down about 80 foot-pounds torque. Now before you can install your new Skyjacker shocks, you have to install these two bushings as well as the boot. And on some applications, you may need to also install this metal sleeve, but for our Jeep, we don't need it. So grab some lithium-based grease, squirt some on the end, and hammer it on in. Yeah! With our shock fully assembled, we can go ahead and install it on our Jeep. When you're tightening down these nuts for the shocks, you just want to tighten this until that bushing is slightly compressed. And before we get to the rear suspension, there's two more things we've got to do up front. We've got to install a new steering stabilizer and a new drop pitman arm, both provided by Skyjacker. First thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this drag link right here so we have access to the old steering stabilizer, which we're going to remove next. To separate the drag link from the pitman arm, we've got to remove this cotter pin and this nut, and then we can take a pickle fork jam it in the middle there and separate the two. Using our Craftsman ratchet, we're going to remove our steering stabilizer. Install the new brackets provided by Skyjacker for the new steering stabilizer. Installing our steering stabilizer, we wanted to make sure that this bracket on the right-hand side is as far over, but not getting in the way of anything. 
and the bracket over on the left hand side needs to be just over far enough so that the steering stabilizer is about halfway out which we've marked with the little black pen right there. So once we've got that all into position, we're going to use our Makita impact and tighten these up. So same thing here, you just want to tighten this until these bushings are compressed a little bit. And once you've fully installed your steering stabilizer, you want to turn it just to make sure you have clearance for everything. Before removing the old pitman arm, you want to mark the steering sector so that when you put on the new pitman arm, it goes on the exact same position. With our new drop pitman arm installed and our drag link reattached, we can put on our wheels and tires and get to the rear of the vehicle. With the front out of the way, it's time to get to the rear, which is going to be a lot easier because we don't have all those steering components to deal with. We just got to swap out the shocks as well as the springs. So we've got this thing all jacked up. Let's get to it. On top of our rear springs, we've got these angled shims. We're going to reuse these, so make sure you hang on to them.
This week, we thought we'd check out a car show series that's becoming a nationwide event called Coffee and Cars. We caught up with some of the coolest cars on the road at the Houston, Texas Coffee and Cars, located in Uptown Park in Houston, Texas. As luck would have it, it was a beautiful day and the turnout was incredible, featuring some of the most amazing vehicles you've ever seen. People brought everything from classic restorations to exotic supercars to late model muscle cars. There was something for everyone, including a custom twin turbo and supercharged Ford GT and a very rare Porsche GT3. All in all, it was a great turnout and a fantastic show for automotive enthusiasts and spectators alike at the Houston Coffee and Cars. No matter what you're into, whether it be exotics, classics, or even DeLoreans, these incredible machines were on display for everyone to check out. The spectators even enjoyed the grand finale when all of these cars fired up and left the show. Now for more information about Coffee and Cars, check them out at coffeeandcarshouston.com. by the Sears Blue Tool crew. Hey, if your check engine light is on, instead of taking your vehicle in for repairs, you might actually want to consider diagnosing it yourself. You might be able to fix a simple problem without spending a ton of time and money. 96 and newer vehicles have an OBD2 port that allows you to connect a scan tool to read codes and diagnose many engine problems. This type of tool is what the guys at a service department use when your check engine light is on. The Innova's Equus 3160 OBD2 scan tool, available from the Sears Blue Tool crew, can help you diagnose these problems with all OBD2 equipped vehicles. It has the additional feature of being able to diagnose ABS faults with GM, Ford, and Chrysler vehicles, and using its live data stream feature can also view real-time data such as RPMs, temperatures, and more. Just plug the scan tool into your OBD2 port and it immediately goes to work. You can also hook it up to your PC's serial port to save and email diagnostic reports, download flash updates, and get more information. Save time and money when your vehicle has a conniption with Innova's OBD2 scan port available from the Sears Blue Tool crew. Do you want bigger brakes without the hassle of installing new calipers and having to bleed your brakes? Then you should check out Bear Brakes Errata Speed Plus 2 brake system. This direct replacement upgrade system includes Bear's 14-inch, two-piece, cross-drilled and slotted rotors and all the stainless steel hardware and brackets to relocate your factory calipers. The increased diameter rotor upgrade system uses your factory calipers to give you greater leverage and improved brake torque. If you have larger than stock wheels 
and you want better braking, then you should definitely check out the Arata Speed Plus 2 brake kit from Bear Brakes, available for most applications. Check out the Motors TV website to watch all of your favorite episodes and more, and talk with other viewers online in our popular forums area. Catch the latest news and information surrounding the show, as well as the entire automotive industry. Take Motors with you on the road with our free app available for the iPhone and iPod Touch, and win free parts by entering in our monthly giveaway. It's all right here at www.motors.tv. After you've got your vehicle lowered back down to the ground, you want to tighten all your spring eye bolts, and then you're going to want to get a four-wheel alignment. Then at 50 and 150 miles, you want to retorque and retighten all of your nuts, your bolts, as well as your U-bolts. Now one of the things that we did before we started this project is we measured both the rear and the front of our vehicle to check the height. The rear basically stayed the same, while on the front we got about an additional two and a half inches. That's going to settle back down to about two inches once we drive this thing around a while. Then in a future episode of Motors, we're going to do a spring over axle conversion on our Jeep, and that's going to give us the height we want on Project Blue Dog. Now I want to thank Skyjacker and also the Sears Blue Tool crew for all the tools that they provided for this episode. For more information on all that stuff, as well as watching more episodes of Motors, just head on over to our website. We'll catch you next week on Motors. I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors we're going to be installing... I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors we're installing Skyjacker Lift Cat. I'm Chris Duke. Giggity giggity goo. <laughs> row, row, row your boat. Yeah, you see? Now we just got to do the thing in the back. Arr, welcome to Motors. Hey, welcome to Motors. <laughs> hey, welcome to Motors. <laughs> <laughs>